On the 20 slides shown below, I present the original photographs of the Second World War from the German archive, which are in my collection. These photos are from my collection department, Wehrmacht on the Eastern and Western Fronts. If you like it, subscribe to my YouTube, like it, so you don't miss the new weekly presentations. If you would like to order 5 inches by 7 inches copies of these photos from the original, you can specify which photos you would like to receive. Laboratory quality. Enjoy your viewing. The SD.Car Eft set. 221 was the first in a series of light reconnaissance vehicles designed to meet operational requirements including reliability, an ability to run on a variety of grades of fuel, simple construction and good off-road performance. However, this type proved too small and too lightly armed, so in 1936-37 a heavier version was planned, using one of two standard chassis for four-wheeled armored cars one with a front-mounted engine, the other rear-mounted. The latter was used in the SD.Car Eft set. 222, which then became the standard light-armored car in German army service until the defeat of Nazi Germany. The vehicles were developed by Eisenwerkweser Hut of Bad Einhausen by using the chassis of the Type Orc 108, one of the Einheits PKW der Wehrmacht standardized designs of heavy off-road car for the armed forces, with an angled armored body and turret. Chassis were built by Hawk, Auto Union, in Svickau and assembled by F. Skickauer Velbing and Maschinenfabrik Niedersachsen in Hanover Linden. The rear-mounted petrol engine was originally a 3.5-liter Hawk V8 with 75 PS, 55 kilowatts, 74 horsepower, horsef. A chassis, from 1942, this was replaced by a 3.8-liter with 90 PS, 66 kilowatts, 89 horsepower, horsef. B chassis, giving it a road speed of 80 km per hour, 50 miles per hour, and a cross-country speed of 40 km per hour. It had a maximum range of 300 km. Used by the reconnaissance battalions, Aufklärungsabteilung, of the Panzer divisions, the type performed well enough in countries with good road networks, like those in Western Europe. However, on the Eastern Front and in the deserts of the North African Campaign, this class of vehicle was hampered by its relatively poor off-road performance. The SD.Car Eft set. 222 was fitted with heavier armament and a larger turret than the SD.Car Eft set. 221 but it was still comparatively cramped and lacked top protection other than a wire screen designed to allow grenades to roll off but this made using the main armament problematic. The machine gun was mounted coaxially with the auto cannon, and both weapons were pintle mounted, and fitted with an elevation and traverse mechanism and floor mounted firing mechanisms. The turret was rotated by the traversing weapons rather than the weapons being fixed to a traversing turret. There was thus no bearing ring and no turret basket, only a fighting compartment largely obstructed by the breaches of the weapons. When the limitations of the vehicle were highlighted during the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941 the SD.Car Eft set. 222 was gradually replaced in the reconnaissance role by the SD.Car Eft set. 250 half-track, but the turret and armament of the SDKDZ-222 was sometimes retained, despite its shortcomings, the SD.Car Eft set. 259ths variant was a SD.Car Eft set. 250 fitted with a top plate surmounted by the same turret and gun combination of the SD.Car Eft set. 222 fitted to the half track, captured SD.Car Eft set. 222s were examined by Soviet designers before they created the similar BA 64 light armored car.
The MG-34, shortened from German, Maschinengewehr 34, or Machine Gun 34, is a German recoil-operated air-cooled general-purpose machine gun, first tested in 1929, introduced in 1934, and issued to units in 1936. It introduced an entirely new concept in automatic firepower, the Einitz Maschine Uhr, universal machine gun, and is generally considered the world's first general-purpose machine gun, GPMG. Both the MG-34 and MG-42 were erroneously nicknamed Spandau by Allied troops, a carryover from the World War I nickname for the MG-08, which was produced at the Spandau arsenal. The versatile MG-34 was chambered for the full-power 7.92x57mm Mauser rifle cartridge and was arguably the most advanced machine gun in the world at the time of its deployment. The MG-34 was envisaged and well developed to provide portable light and medium machine gun infantry cover, anti-aircraft coverage, and even sniping ability. Its combination of exceptional mobility, being light enough to be carried by one man, and high rate of fire, of up to 900 rounds per minute, was unmatched. It entered service in great numbers from 1939. Nonetheless, the design proved to be rather complex for mass production and was supplemented by the cheaper and simpler MG-42, though both remained in service and production until the end of the war. The SD. Car FZ 251, Zorn de Croft Fahrzeug 251, half track was a World War II German armored personnel carrier designed by the Hanno Mag Company, based on its earlier, unarmored SD. Car FZ 11 vehicle. The SD. Car FZ 251 was designed to transport the Panzergrenadier, German mechanized infantry, into battle. SD. Car FZ 251s were the most widely produced German half tracks of the war, with at least 15,252 vehicles and variants produced by seven manufacturers. Some sources state that the SD. Car FZ 251 was commonly referred to simply as Hanno Mags by both German and Allied soldiers after the manufacturer of the vehicle. This has been questioned, and may have been only a post-war label. German officers referred to them as SPW, Schutz in Panzerwagen, or Armored Infantry Vehicle, in their daily orders and memoirs. The Citroen U23, or Type 23, was a light, two-ton, truck introduced by Citroen in 1935. Although the engine cowling and front body appeared similar to the Citroen Traction Avons, the U23 had a conventional rear-wheel drive layout. Production lasted through 1969, and approximately one million were produced. The truck was powered by a 1911 cc four-cylinder petrol engine with a 1767 cc four-cylinder diesel engine made available in 1936. One major customer was the French military, who ordered large quantities of Type 23s after the declaration of World War II. 
At the time of the German invasion, more than 12,000 had been delivered in less than 10 months. About 6,000 were pressed into German service after the French defeat of June 1940. Bus and coach versions, called the Type 23 Rue, were introduced in 1941. The U-23 underwent a major restyling in the mid-1950s, giving it a wide horizontal grille that incorporated the headlamps which were previously mounted to the fenders. It was gradually replaced by the Citroen 350-850 range, also called Belfagor, which had been introduced in 1964, although U-23 production continued until 1969. The PAC 36, Panzer Rabwe Hanon 36, is a 3.7 cm, 37 mm caliber German anti tank gun used during the Second World War. It was the main anti tank weapon of Wehrmacht Panzer Jäger units until 1942. Developed by Rhein Metal in 1933, it was first issued to the German Army in 1936, with 9,120 being available by the beginning of the war in September 1939 and a further 5,339 produced during the war. As the predominant anti-tank gun design in the world during the late 1930s, demand was high for the Pac-36 with another 6,000 examples produced for export and the design being copied by the Soviet Union as the 45mm anti-tank gun M1932, 19K, and by other nations such as Japan. It first saw service during the Spanish Civil War in 1936, where it performed well against the light tanks of the conflict. It was first used during the Second World War against Poland in 1939 and had little difficulty with any of the Polish tanks. The Battle of France in 1940 revealed its inadequate penetration capability against French and British heavier tanks, particularly the Charby I, and especially the Matilda II, receiving the derisive nicknames Heri Sanklopf Gerat, Army Door Knocking Device, or Panzer Anklopf Kanona, Tank Door Knocking Cannon, from its crews but it sufficed to defeat the bulk of the Allied armor in the campaign. The invasion of the Soviet Union brought the Pac-36 face to face with large numbers of T-34 and KV-1 tanks, which were invulnerable to its fire. However, 91% of the Soviet tank forces in 1941 consisted of lighter types that lacked sufficient armor to defeat the gun, and the Pac-36 knocked out thousands of such tanks. The Pac-36 began to be replaced from late 1940 onward by the 5 cm Pac-38 anti-tank gun and from November 1941 by the 7.5 cm Pac-40. The 15 cm Schwerer Fell Orbitz 18 or SFH 18, German, Heavy Field Howitzer, Model 18, nicknamed Immergrün, Evergreen, was the basic German division level heavy howitzer of 149 mm during the Second World War, serving alongside the smaller but more numerous 10.5 cm Lef 18. Its mobility and firing range and the effectiveness of its 44 kg shell made it the most important weapon of all German infantry divisions. A total of 6,756 examples were produced. It replaced the earlier, First World War era design of the 15 cm SFH 13, which was judged by the Krupp Rhein Metal Designer team of the SFH 18 as completely inadequate. The SFH-18 was twice as heavy as its predecessor, had a muzzle velocity increase of 40%, a maximum firing range 4.5 km greater, and a new split trail gun carriage that increased the firing traverse 12-fold. The secret development from 1926 to 1930 allowed German industry to deliver a trouble-free design at the beginning of German rearmament in 1933. It was the first artillery weapon equipped with rocket-assisted ammunition to increase range. The SFH-18 was also used in the self-propelled artillery piece Schwerer Panzer Horbitz 18-1, more commonly known as Hummel. 
The SFH-18 was one of Germany's three main 15cm caliber weapons, the others being the 15cm Kanonu-18, a core-level heavy gun, and the 15cm SIG-33, a short-barreled infantry gun. The 8.8 cm Flak 18 36 37 41 is a German 88 mm anti aircraft and anti tank artillery gun, developed in the 1930s. It was widely used by Germany throughout World War II and is one of the most recognized German weapons of the conflict. Development of the original model led to a wide variety of guns. The name applies to a series of related guns, the first one officially called the 8.8 cm Flak 18, the improved 8.8 cm Flak 36, and later the 8.8 cm Flak 37. Flak is a contraction of German Fliegerabwehrhannon, also referred to as Fliegerabwehrhannon, meaning aircraft defense cannon, the original purpose of the weapon. In English, Flak became a generic term for ground anti aircraft fire. In informal use, the guns were universally known as the ACT ACT, 88, by Germans and the 88 by the Allies. The later model was the Flak 37, which included updated instrumentation to allow the gun layers to follow directions from the single director more easily. In some sources, it is mistakenly stated that the Flak 37 was not equipped for anti armor operation. In fact all 8.8 cm flak guns were capable of operation in the dual role. The parts of the various versions of the guns were interchangeable, and it was not uncommon for various parts to be mixed and matched on a particular example. Both flak 18 and flak 36 had the same permanently attached fuse setter with twos under Stelbecher. The flak 3741 had the simplified fuse setter of the 8.8 cm flak 41.